Hey, Faye Babes. I'm Aubrey. And I'm Peyton. And today we are going back to our roots as we review another Faye romance with Callie Hart's Quicksilver. Yes, so drink a cup of coffee as we dive between these paper sheets. <laughs> Let's do this. <it. laughs> Alrighty, hi everyone. Welcome hey. to this episode. It feels so good to be home. We are back reviewing a romantic novel. <laughs> and not only a romantic book, but you know, your indie published, you know, self published. Yes. Love, 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 love the up and coming um, authors in this community, um, especially when they're good books, um, which we'll get yes. into. Um, but <laughs> uh, because this is a fantasy book, there is a lot of spoilers to be had and a lot of plot twists. And so I just want to let you know we are in our NS section, which is our non spoiler section. Um, so we're just going to give you a little plot recap. This is a good time to get an idea if this is the book for you and our initial thoughts and our start ratings. Um, but all in all, I'm going to let Aubrey take it away. We will let you know when we get to our spoiler section. So you'll be good to go. Yes. All right, y'all. So Quicksilver follows Sarah's Fane, who comes face to face with death himself as she inadvertently reopens a gateway portal between realms and is transported from her like Dune-esque sci-fi planet to a land of like snow and ice and forest and fae. The fae have always been stuff of myth to her, of legend and of nightmares. This is the Goodreads review that I am quoting, <laughs> yeah, that, I, that I'm trying to make my own here. Um, <laughs> but it turns out that they are real and that Ceres has landed herself right in the middle of a centuries-long conflict that might just get her killed. Yes. There's a lot that happens in this book, guys. I have another paragraph to say. And why I'm quoting Goodreads and I didn't come up with my own plot review is because I had no idea how the fuck to summarize this. It's no. one of those books that's so long that you're like, okay, well, there's a plot thing that happens here. Like, the first 100 pages is just getting to this planet, which we'll get into. And so <laughs> I didn't know how to market it to you. So I'm going to let the author and Goodreads take it away. <laughs> So, the first of her kind to tread the frozen mountains of Yvila, whatever, in over a thousand years, Ceres mistakenly binds herself to Kingfisher, a handsome fae warrior, ooh la la, who has secrets and nefarious agendas <laughs> of his own. He will use her alchemist magic to protect his people, no matter what it costs him. Or her. Or her. So, long story short, human girl gets transported into a fey realm, meets this really hot guy. They're in, like, a long fucking battle war that's been going on for yeah. years. I mean, years. Centuries. Think, oh, centuries yeah. long. Yeah. And, of course, the human girl finds out she has some sort of power and a duty to She's serve special. to this realm. What does it mean? <laughs> what will happen? Is it a good book? Um, so yes, let's, get into let's it. be clear here. Callie Hart decided to take two books and put them into one. Yeah, honestly. Um, this is not a book for the faint of heart. This is a long book. Yeah. This is, yep. yes, it may be. I believe, I've been calling it self-published. I hope it is. I believe it is um, I believe it is as well. I, um, I would not be surprised if her next book is picked up by a publisher, though, um, because it has gained lots of popularity yes um i'm sure aubrey will fact check me in a second because i do want to give credit where credit's due if girls getting signed to a publishing house we're gonna <laughs> let you know yes publisher it says kindle edition 670 pages which means she published with amazon uh indie published yes go off queen go off queen get that coin she is self-published which is so fun and i'm happy we can talk about a self-published yeah. author um because she, honestly the thing like from the industry industry side of things is that sh this marketing was done by her um yeah she yeah, had she no did big this. coin behind her mm -hmm. from a big publishing house pushing her book um so yes no offense callie i hope the covers get better in the future but um <laughs> they seem to be you know <laughs> but here's we are gonna the start thing somewhere. i will say do i want the cover that quicksilver originally has on my shelves absolutely not but because she indie published into like the Amazon sphere, if you look at romanticy books that are trending and that are top ranking on Kindle Unlimited, it's the mold. It it's perfect, and it has a little bit of extra like 
jazz to it. Like, I think it's a great cover for its genre. However, I think she kind of, like, pushed past that romantic Kindle Unlimited romance genre and has now kind of moved in with the big guns, so to speak. Yes. Um, so we'll see what happens. Yeah, we'll see. But she did design the cover herself. So, like, I mean... Again, indie publishing, I think it's so incredibly easy to publish a bad book with indie publishing. It is so incredibly difficult to publish a great book with indie publishing because you have to do it all yourself. You have to pay for your editors. You have to make your own book cover. You have to do all of these things. And you are effectively running a business as well as being an artist and writing a book. I just feel like I really need to, like, protect her. I don't even know this woman, but... um, (laughs) I just think it takes a lot of guts to have like a really popular book that's self-published. Um, and yes, there are critiques and yes, there are things I would have done differently when I was reading it. Yes, I was frustrated, but also, wow, like how fucking cool um, that out of yeah. all the romance books that are popular right now, we've chosen this one to read. So mm-hmm. wh- what do you think? How, how do you feel? You know, I feel like this book hit everything that you kind of want out of a romanticy book. It had, you know, the chosen one. It had the war, the conflict, the romance. I did really enjoy the romance. I also did believe that this was a standalone. And I kind of wish it was. This is kind of going into the plotting. Because, like, we're in our non-spoiler section. But she hit so many things already in this first book. That I was like, if that had been, if she had told us an entire epic romantic story in one book, I think that would have been more powerful than the fact that I don't know how many is more in this series. If it's a duology, I think that's fine. But if this series yeah. is supposed to go on for like four or five books, the storytelling was very lengthy. Yes. And I think if it had been a standalone, there would have been a pro. But because it's not, I was like, we didn't need to spend this much time, this many words. It took a hundred pages to get her to the inciting incident of the book. Yes. I really, I'm, I'm hoping this is a duology. Yeah. Um, because I think where the story is taking us next, like she kind of summarizes it in like the last sentence, like she gets like a person, <laughs> but like it was really cute actually. Yeah. Um, you're like, okay, that's what the next book's about. Um, but I was still excited to read. At the end of this book, I was like, oh, okay, I'm excited to read the next one. Like, I definitely will read the next one. Yeah, the beginning. It, it's not it. It needs some tweaking. It needs some refining. It needs some cuts. Um, yeah. Definitely could get to certain situations much faster to keep us more intrigued. This is a book. If my life wasn't so crazy, I think I would have mm-hmm. zoomed through. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how good your pacing or storytelling is. If the book is long, the book is long. And yeah, after a while, it's like the way that she tells the story is you know, mm-hmm. so captivating. But at the end of the day, it's lengthy. And there are certain things where I'm like, okay, where are we going with this? I'm kind of tired of this rinse and repeat. But once you get to the second half of the book, it fucking takes off. And you yeah. will not put this book down. Um, But I, you know... The best way to actually explain this is also like the Crescent City novels because I felt very similar to this. And I will say I enjoyed this more than a Crescent City novel. Um, Yeah. But the same thing happened with Sarah J. Moss and her books. It's like, okay, you wrote this really big book, which is great, but I have to fight through the first half because I know the second half is going to be great. But if we could just... You know, we don't always, every fantasy book doesn't have to be this long. It doesn't have to be. But in my head, because she's, you know, I'm getting this kind of novice writer from her. She may not be, who knows. But she has a lot of books actually out already. I don't know if they're they're all all fantasy. fantasy. I think they were romance because that's a big trend lately. It feels like she had so much to say and she just said it all (laughs) instead of really thinking out how she wanted to go about telling it. So that's my only tweak with that. And to be kind of like a warning label when you're jumping this book and you're 200 pages and you're like, come on, hardcover girls. What the fuck? I'm bored. (laughs) Just give it a second. (laughs) Yeah. Well, okay. And so I would like to draw a comparison to of for Crescent City or Quicksilver here to another epic, huge, ridiculously long book. 
the Stormlight Archive by Brandon Sanderson. This is high epic fantasy. There is not romance in that book. Do not. I'm not recommending it if you like romance. Okay. I think it's a great book, but you got to know what you're getting into. And that's high epic fantasy. And it's so crazy long. But what he does in that length is he plots it into smaller books. And you always feel like you're moving through the Being story. Fed. You're eating. Yes. And <laughs> I feel like if you love what you're reading, then more is always better, right? Like we always want more books of our favorite books. We want all of the content. So writing a big book and going into it and having a goal of having this huge fantasy book isn't wrong. But I think we all went into it with the promises that this was going to be a fey romance and she was going to have some weird metal power. It's called the Fae and Alchemy series. You know what I mean? So when you get that kind of marketing and it's supposed to be a romanticy and romanticy should be 50% fantasy and 50% romance and our love interest it, like the main character and the love interest don't start interacting until page 250. That's a fail. That is where, you know, you should have just started the book at a different part. Because like Peyton was saying, the second half of the book was still just as overwritten as the first half. It's not like she changed the pacing of her story, but she changed the story that she was telling. And the, yeah. Yeah. I just, why, the, if you want to write romanticy, put that main character with the love interest in chapter one. Yeah. That's my hot take. Yep. Even even the authors we shit on the most, <clears throat> JLA, <laughs> think back to the first from Blood and Ash book. Who do we see in chapter one? Like you yes. need that, especially if you want to enter the romanticy. Fantasy, that's fine. If I know this is a fantasy, like you have that like high fantasy sort of mindset. You're yes. like, okay, I gotta work for this a little bit, but it's gonna be worth it because I'm here for the you know, the fantastical storytelling. Mm -hmm. When I'm in it, for the romance i'm like okay who is it who's it gonna be who's it gonna be not to shit on the book but also knowing where it lies <laughs> where it's at now who knows yeah you know, she could get picked up and we could have an atlas six moment where the book kind of changes a little bit for the better um i want her to be picked up by tour so badly i think they could do a lot of cool stuff with these covers she and needs, also the story she needs telling. to like join bramble, bramble. Yeah. Yes. Bramble is Tor's romanticy all shoot. It's where we got actually JLA's Fall of Wrath and Ruin, yeah. which is levels, levels better than the From Blood and Ash books in terms of like writing quality. 100%. Now, I don't know. She might choose to stay any published because she's got to be making bank off of yeah. this. But if she does, I would love to see her in Bramble. And I kind of want to move into what we were saying with like get us to the romance because we're here for the romance, for a romance to see. Her writing style, when we do get into that, and I like, I love a romance author who enters into the romanticy sphere, hits the fantasy elements on the head, and you just get to watch them shine in the in romance. The romance I <laughs> literally like was blushing reading. I was about to say that. Book. I was like, I'm blushing thinking about I, and it. I, because oh, oh, how and many I can't wait to hear. Have I said I don't like too much smut? I don't like too much yes. smut. Yes, there are certain scenes in this book where I'm like, all right, relax. But I was like, I was like craving them. I'm like, I want yeah. them. It's, it yes. gave me like, like that, that feeling where you get your favorite fantasy characters. Like uh -huh. it gave me those feelings. And we have read a lot of fantasy books recently. Um, what is it? A Fate Inked in Blood is um, by Blood or yeah. whatever. It's one of them where I'm like, oh, I can't wait to meet these characters. And mm -hmm. No, like I just wasn't. I wasn't falling in love with these characters. The these two y'all you're gonna fall in love with them yes you're gonna fall in love with them they're great <laughs> and we can forget that his name is kingfisher we can it's pass not that it. the romance Callie. is so good you can forget that his name is fisher fisher's fine it's, it's when she kept on calling him kingfisher i was like kingfisher is there's a lot there's in the spoiler section i want to bring something up about that but and we should get there because we have a lot to say Yes, <laughs> but yes, these characters. She she wrote mm -hmm. the characters well. Every character. There's one actually. Um, Carrion, 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 Carrion Swift. Oh my God, Swift. He, <laughs> Aubrey. He reminded me, and he's not like this, but he's the like yeah. the Hoid in this universe. Where he's like <laughs> the witty. Like you never yeah. know what's gonna happen next. And there's a big plot twist in this book with him where you're like, what? Like you? Um, 
he yeah. adds that like comedic for her to like add in that character that added that yes. comedy throughout so the book and the like satirical element when things are really heavy I'm laughing I'm laughing when reading this book and so yeah. I just for her to add those characters and then sort of like Sarah does with like her inner circles and in all of her books Sarah J Moss mm-hmm. I'm talking about um in her like he, she achieves yes. that in this book mm-hmm. and that's hard to do um yes. you know you have the like sir you have the like right hand man and you have like the hot kind of right hand man and you have the bitch and then you have like the girl she can confide in and then like oh my gosh guys like the characters in these books love them love the characters there's a lot there's a lot and it's hard to manage all that yeah i think because it's such an epic scale of a book we can also pop in with characters the world building We have different planets. We have, like, time jumping. But I think she balances the unique elements with kind of, like, the standard, like, traditional tropes for especially a fae romanticy. Like, she doesn't have to spend any time explaining to us that Kingfisher has, like, weird shadowy magic things and that he can open portal gates. We're like, yes, we know that. That is a standard in our community, like, in our thank genre. You. Thank but you for dinner. She does, <laughs> yeah, thank you. Mwah. But she does spend, I think, the appropriate amount of time explaining to us Ceres' powers, which remind me more of, a, like, it's very, it's a hard magic system. She has this, like, ability to interact with metals. Almost yeah. misborny, but not really. Yeah. But I it will say, like, it kind of feels like it's feeding into that vibe. I think she did a great job of like balancing the world building throughout this that you are never confused. Confused. And yes. she does add enough like unique stuff with like the homes. Like when she's like, oh, hey, there's also vampires. I'm like, cool. I know what a fuck a vampire is. You, you're going to call it a sucker. You're going to call it a feeder. Yeah. Great. I know exactly what to picture. Thank you. Let's get on to the hot like dinner scene you know what I mean I (laughs) I think she balanced it so well for what I'm looking for in our romanticy I think if this was just a fantasy book I'd be like okay but because it's a romanticy and you want 50 50 I think it was she slayed she slayed slayed. especially the second half what we're talking about but I will say when it opened in this like very like sci-fi-esque setting I was like this is cool I just think that it broke the promise of why you got into reading the book. Right. Anyways. Okay. So are we into yes. our star rating here? Yes. We yes, can yes. Move on. Um, okay. So I rated this four stars um, because when I was thinking what we all just talked about, knowing it's, you know, self-published, all of that. And then also because it's about the length of a Crescent City novel, I did enjoy yeah. it more. I was like, you know what, girl, you deserve your four stars. Um, so, and I <laughs> did enjoy myself, even though I was like, you know, reading it for the podcast. So I'm like, okay, wait, am I rushing this? Am I not? No, I felt, I felt pretty good about it. Like when I finished it, I was like, no, this is a four star read. Um, maybe a three and a half, but I'm gonna give it with the four. It deserves. So yeah, we're gonna go four here. I'm gonna read the next book. Like I can confidently say I'm going to read the next book. Um, so yeah. I think that deserves four. I balanced between a three and a three and a half. It immediately lost a star for me with the first 100, 200. Oh pages. yeah, definitely. Yeah. It could not be a five star because of that. I really loved the characters as we were talking about, the romanticy. I think A lot of this book was so strong, but I think it still loses that other half and gets bumped down to a three because I never wanted to be reading every single word. I skimmed a majority of this book where I'd read like just the dialogue and stuff like that because as much as like a lot of things happened, I still think it could have been 200 pages shorter. Yeah, I can see that. And I just like there was a lot of the reading where it felt... It just felt overwritten. Yeah. And I was just like, oh, I did the same thing. There was just so much good in it. But then as I was reading, I couldn't read every word. I had to be skimming it to be consuming it at the rate that I wanted to be. And so that's unfortunate. And you were able and I was able to skim a lot and still get the Mm -hmm. full story. Yes. And so that what it's one thing There's a lot of filler. It, you're lazy reading. You're like, wait, what happened? And you have to go back. Mm-hmm. That's one thing. That's on you. But yes. when you're like, when you can read the whole book by skimming, mm-hmm. you're like, all right, we could go a little bit here. 
but yeah it could have been trimmed all in all i think we like i recommend this for you all to read um uh for sure i think i think it's a a great book i'm looking for the next one so with that being said we're going to move into our spoiler section here because we have to get through all of this (laughs) Um, (laughs) please come back after you've read the book and we can chat about it yes 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 all right so starting off yes yeah it was really weird because you are kind of thrusted into this or thrown thrust it's kind of a weird word to use but thrown into <laughs> it's this fantasy we can say thrust yeah. all we want <laughs> this uh science fiction world you kind of yeah. once again have these sort of like factions or like districts kind mm-hmm. of like you do in hunger games um uh she lives in the third the queen and all the guards live in the first and we are very uh, quickly introduced to the brutality of this world. Yeah. Um, there are no second chances. Your your throat is just slit. Um, we yeah. find out that's what happened to her mom. Her mom was a prostitute, um, mm-hmm. um, which is so sad that, you know, she had to do that to support her children. Yeah, such a dark opening. We kind of see her as very much a survivalist. But it lingered too long. I did not need, honestly, any of the scene of her with the guy in the forge. Like, I understand it was the set up that she already had this, like, forge. Elroy. Yeah, background. But this should have been five chapters. Okay, opening with her stealing the gauntlet and then, like, climbing up the wall. Sick imagery. Character I development understand- right there. Yes. Yeah. I understand why we wanted to show the forge. I even get like the tavern scene and setting up this like kind of like flirty relationship with carry on and like having five chapters. Hayden- <laughs> yeah. Five chapters. Also, Hayden is such a fucking like primrose Everdeen. Like, oh my God. So- yes. He exists <laughs> only, only so that way she gets to be like the protective older sister only for her character development. I my gambling problem well, what? shut the fuck up Hayden stop. <laughs> stop I hate I hate whiny little siblings uh, I want to jump to the palace where we're with the queen and she's like she's human but she's been around for whatever I don't really know what's going on and the queen's like the fae what do you know about the fae and she's like are you out of your mind and the queen's like no the fae and Sarah says like okay I'll play it wrong yeah I totally know the fae and then the queen's immediately like you don't know shit about the fae killer <laughs> I know, isn't it so funny? Like, I it was a long time since I read that scene because this book's so fucking long. But I just remember being like, "Oh, the queen's like trying to be cool with Sarah's. Like she's like trying to be like, yeah, you know." And then she like literally stabs her in the back, and she's like yeah. off. And then the you know the inciting incident is when she is literally being disemboweled, yeah, <laughs> stabbed to death. There's a sword she- like through her stomach they're trying to do the dagger and she whips out her magic powers and all of a sudden she yeah that quicksilver and her are like yeah hey, and she's like what the fuck did i just do and then boom someone comes through a portal bam it's king fisher and yeah. so during this part like i really want to reread this chapter because mm-hmm. i was unsure of who this man was and well, actually she thinks he's like an angel of death yeah and i'm like oh okay so this is for some the guard i thought Mm -hmm. the guard was actually going to be a good guy which we find out is not true at all yeah Um, yeah but i was like oh he's gonna you know whatever Mm -hmm. i thought he was gonna act like he was torturing her but then once he started torturing her i go no then he just mind (laughs) yeah never never mind and so um king fisher we find out comes through and saves her and takes her back um but we never really got a name from him of course i was unsure Mm. so when she's in the fey realm now yeah world hopped um we find out she meets everlane um which we find out is his sister (laughs) yeah um but when renfis walked through the door Mm -hmm. the way that callie hart wrote about him i was like oh that's the love interest that's who (laughs) saved her we find out he's like kind of old and like i think he's like into he's he's having a side thing with evangeline yeah it's not like explicit but like it's yeah it's there um so and then we find out eventually once they're like in front of Bellican or Bellican, whatever the fuck. His yeah, name the is, king. That king Fisher is the guy that like it took it took your girl a minute to get to there. It took but so long. I it fucking, took so long. I fucking hated being in that palace. 
Yes. Like, as much as I got to say that the sci-fi, like, on her home planet felt long, being in this palace felt so ridiculous. I, I didn't need any of it. I didn't like Evangeline. Like, I felt like she served nothing. And then she disappears for 80% of this book. I understand that they're like, hey, you need to learn about court politics. And she's like, I just want to go home. But like, there was no, we weren't moving in any direction. The only scene that was worth it was her getting her little foxy guy, little pet, her little pet. Her little fox. <laughs> and like she had, that's where her banter with Kingfisher started, started in this like yeah. rundown forge. I don't know. It just felt like backstory. It felt, I was just like, it was such a I, backstory. I, uh, th- listen yeah the, the point of the palace was to give us an understanding of the fey realm and then for her to run away and get caught which she does yeah um and yeah. then that's when they f- yeah and also to understand more of her um alchemist powers and what this mm-hmm. means that that was that was the moment to but it's like 100 pages yeah. yes wait it was um just evangeline her name's everlane everlane yeah i don't know I was like, who's Evangeline? <laughs> <laughs> I, think I was thinking of a like, character from Red Queen, actually. Oh, no, you're good. I just, I was like, wait, am I missing something? No. I, I literally, I forget so much when I read that I'm like, no, I'm missing something. <laughs> Aubrey knows. Everlane. Okay. No, that's just how little I cared about her. I think her trying to run away with the ring was almost a smart decision considering like what we have like the the trope of her like i gotta get home because she's like refusing the hero's journey and she hasn't like accepted her path yet right like her entire arc is like getting to the point where she's like "Mm, maybe i do like this world where i get to live in a palace and have good meals every day and i'm not like suffering on my home planet but like (laughs) i get that like it's hard because it's your home and your brother's there and people you love whatever um yeah it was still a little stupid I think she could have gone a, at a slower pace to get there. Not that I think that the writing should have been at a slower pace. I think that, like, we should have just given some, like, hey, she's been at the palace for a month now working. She's collected all this info. Instead, she's like, so is there? where's the pool? And he's like, oh, it's kind <laughs> of, like, under the palace. And she's like, got it. Peace out. Yeah. I love how she finds Onyx through this scene, too. Cause- yeah. Yeah. She like, and then I love the banter. And also, let's talk about how this fox goes from being literally feral to just licking people's faces in the next chapter. Listen, it just didn't want to be at the palace. What can it say? Like she's giving <laughs> Snow White vibes for sure. Yeah, there's like also her relationship with the Quicksilver too. So, um, so King Fisher catches her, of course, which is so Abby. sexy and amazing. Um, <laughs> and this is where the book starts getting better right away yes um when they make their bargain basically Mm -hmm. um she has to make um these relics for him and then once she's done she basically has to do his bidding for him and then once she's done she is free to go back home um yes and be with her brother um but she's the bid that uh the oh my gosh the um what the oath that she makes basically he has to go and get hayden yeah, because, okay, so there's two oaths. The first one is, because she goes up to the pool, and he's like, you're not going to fucking survive that. Like, that ring's like a fucking scam. And so she agrees to help him in any way, because she's a little idiot, and she doesn't know, like, the fey riddles yet, which is, like, I, I love that. I love it when it's, like, you should have thought more about your wording. You should have read, yes. um, read the contract. Um contract. So she agrees to help him and basically gets put under his command if he tries to bring back her brother. And instead, lo and behold, this was actually spoiled for me. Really? Yeah. Like, I like one of the like very few, like, because I was avoiding TikToks about this, but I saw a TikTok about it. It was like Carrie Ann showing up. And I was like, oh, shit. Uh, so I, I want to know, knew, how though. did the reveal feel? Yes. Not knowing that it was going to be Carrion instead of Hayden. Oh, my gosh. So when this happened, I was like, yeah, okay, this makes sense because she has some Faye abilities and Mm -hmm. Hayden's actually not her brother. He's her brother. But then I was like, wait, but they fucked. I was like, yeah, I thought they were siblings. 
Yeah, I really did. Because <laughs> can you tell Peyton struggled with the start of this book? <laughs> well, because I at first I thought he was going to be the love interest and he was the secret fey guy living in this yeah. human world. Um, and that's why he's gotten along as easy as he has in which in the district or re- sector in which he lives. Yeah, yeah. Um, and he was actually this fey prince that's been protecting her this whole time without mm. no blah 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 like that's like you know that's a totally mm-hmm. you know believable yeah. fantasy story um so then when he brings him through and we got a little bit of his like banter or bickering thing and it was kind of yeah cute or whatever but i didn't know he would take this role of like uh older brother for her yeah um, actually um and friends. like a friend and it turns out that he had her smell on him um, because they had had sex before. Um, and he did say, I'm Hayden, I'm Hayden. So mm-hmm. now it makes sense. But, oh, yeah, I was like, I, I knew he was coming back. They made yeah. probably made too much of a big deal of him in the beginning of the book. I'm like, he's coming mm-hmm. back somehow. I just don't know in what way. Yes. And so I was like, okay, this is his way of coming back. Mm-hmm. And so, oh, my gosh. I, and I'm happy for it. Because yeah. I really enjoyed his character in this book. He was fucking oh, hilarious. for sure. Because then, like, after they pick him up, Kingfisher is immediately like, we're fucking out of here. And they go to, like, a tavern for, like, a night or whatever. And then they teleport to the pa- to the manor. And when she wakes up, Carrion is holding, like, the- it's like the backbone of this story. I feel like because he's just so funny. He's so chill about it, which hindsight we know is because he was waiting to come back and he's a little he's more than you think. But at this point, I was just like, oh, it feels like a little like cheaty that he was so well adjusted to coming to the Fey realm. But I also feel like if you have this person who's like, skeevy a little bit and as forced to adapt in the third and become this like lord of like the third i was like oh it makes sense that he would like immediately be like okay how can i like survive the best here um but i loved his energy and i love how he like kept flirting with her and the fact that like it just kept pissing kingfisher off was so good i loved like that balance instead of like sometimes you know it's like the first love interest that you have and then as soon as it's like oh we found the hot better guy like the gale of the story yeah and then gale just comes like a total ass as soon as you meet Peta. no but carrie, carrie knows was, what like, he's doing <laughs> yes he was like well we could fuck like he, yeah, oh like, when she's like when she's stuck in kingfisher's bed and he's like how much do you think you'd piss him off if we just have sex here <laughs> like he's like silly he's funny he doesn't yeah. fucking care like and at mm-hmm. the end of the day like he respects king fisher and he respects what she really wants and yeah when she's like basically dying at the end of the book like we get the imagery of him screaming at king fisher like is she okay like is she okay like, yeah he does genuinely care about her mm-hmm. but i think of more of like uh hey we, we were like friends with benefits once and like yes. i care about you as a person yeah. not necessarily mm-hmm. a body but like don't get me wrong carrie is certified fuck boy like he wants to just have sex. Like when the uh, we oh got the imagery gosh. of the sprites like scrubbing him to get the scent off of him. He's like, I think I just had like a threesome or like a foursome with these. <laughs> it's like, I think he initiated something extra with them. <laughs> yeah. Oh my! Um, I want a Carrion book. <laughs> oh, I know. That's why. Like he gave me those funny like R-rated Hoid vibes of like just yes. like that funny like yeah. add in like. Like, they're in a really serious moment and Carrion's like well maybe I'll fuck one of the witches and they're like yeah no you're not gonna have sex with any of the witches he goes but it'd be cool <laughs> just to say I did it I mean, it would be kind of fun though low-key like he just goes in the world and wants to experience it <laughs> yes while we're kind of like hitting on him um because he's the best side character for sure honestly perhaps the best character in the book yeah, uh, I want to jump great. down to like our twist at the very end with him just so that way we can return to Sarah's and the fact that like he just keeps like edging Malcolm on and they are and Sarah's is like, like shut up shut kill up. this idiot like why is he saying this 
And like, because he like knew the whole time he just needed to drink. But that was so fucking perfect. And then he's like, oh, well, I told you about my grandma. <laughs> he said he said something cheeky like come here blood sucker come get a taste yeah. or something like he yes. was like they're like carrion shut the fuck up like who invited <laughs> this guy like why are you even yeah. here and it's like no he had a bigger purpose to serve yes and we get the whole backstory um that you know and i you thought can't... she was gonna be the lost princess yeah but it was him he was the was lost him. prince he was, he was the, the lost, lost princess, princess. <laughs> of course he is um yes. so we find out that like who you get your powers from you mm-hmm. cannot suck from that bloodline so we get this whole vampire yes. thing, like thrusted in here but she took a really cool angle with it and that was yeah. a huge plot twist that mm-hmm. was because it's like why is this guy here um but now we know like and i mean there was foreshadowing when he talks about how he knew a lot about the Fae and about how his like grandma gave him books about it and blah, blah, blah. No, I think it was perfectly laid out. All right. Let's go back to the romance. Back, yes. back to our main plot line. Thank you for enjoying this little break of uh, Carrie and Swift. The comedic relief. Yes, Carrie and Swift. <laughs> the romance between them really kicks off with these dinner scenes. It felt very like Beauty and the Beast-esque. Yes! Where he's like, you must have dinner with me. And then she tries to like invite all of these people to the <laughs> dinner because it's so awkward. Um, I love the little world building detail of like her sitting some like at the like next to him and she's just like i'm a human i don't want to sit at the other end of the fucking huge ass table and it's like actually where like his wife should sit yeah yeah and and kingfisher's just like no it's fine let her sit there when like ren is in the room because he knows i i love little fantasy world building courting details that's like one of my favorite like micro tropes i guess we we have that very vividly in this book yes um, yeah very beating the beast like how he loses himself to the quicksilver and like tears apart all his tapestries and his yeah room. Like, that is uh-huh. really what the beast does and so yeah, yeah we get that beastie. sort of like imagery um mm-hmm. yeah so in this book she gets really jealous of uh, so obviously we could go into every sex scene everything i would love to <laughs> know what your favorite scene is i mean i know mine oh my gosh um yeah <laughs> but um but also their relationship grows. It it just does. Yeah. Um. And so we come to find out, like, all right. When you're reading a fantasy novel, you're like, okay, how do mates work in this world? Right. <laughs> they have to be destined somehow. Yeah. Um. And uh, we get through their sex scenes when he he bites her sometimes, and then she has Hot. these tattoos on her, and then he hides them, and it's like, okay. Bitch is getting like inked up when <laughs> inked up oh the, yeah the fact that they're transferring she doesn't ask enough questions about that she either. does not ask enough questions <laughs> like i get in the moment you're like no i'm fucking like whatever but like afterwards like, i would be uh... i'd be like showing everyone do you see this fucking tattoo yeah like <laughs> kingfisher and i had sex the other day and like it just like showed up on like the back of my and neck would have been like and she asks, and he's like, don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah. I yap way too much to be in a fantasy book. I'd he's be like, worrying about do, it. Do I'd be telling everyone about it. About it. <laughs> and so we find out that when people get married in this world, they go and get mm-hmm. themselves tattooed after, like, Matching five tattoos. years of being together. And they kind of, like, manifest what they want, like, goals for their yeah. relationship. Mm-hmm. But way back when. Mood board. Like, <laughs> it's a mood yeah. board for a relationship. <laughs> a vision board. <laughs> It's like a house, like a car. <laughs> I did in the one girl. She's like, I got. Uh, she's like, I want three children, so I got that tattooed on me. <laughs> she's like, I know that's asking a lot. I know, I know it's a lot. <laughs> um. So yeah. Anyway, so we, basically, the the myth goes that like years ago, like even further mm-hmm. than like all these fae have been alive, which is hundreds of years. Um, this mating bond would snap where people would. Um, they get what are they like the god rings around them and like yeah they, basically that's like, an extra thing the stories in which we yeah. hear now about like greek mythology and these like tragic mm-hmm. love stories this is their tragic 
Greek mythology yeah. love stories. And turns out that Kingfisher and Ceres are living it in present day. Um, yeah. And it so looks like he maybe didn't really know what to do about this. And so he just didn't tell her. Um, and it, it's not until he talk, she talks to the healer that he sees a lot. And she asks about her tattoos because she's married mm-hmm. after Carrion tries to fuck her five times. Um, that she explains. Oh, and she had been like jealous of her the whole time because she thought that Kingfisher yeah, might have been fucking her. Whole- and this yeah, woman's like, she- I'm married. <laughs> yeah, like, I'm married. And she- I love the writing. She's like, let me be clear. I'm never going to have sex with you, Gary. <laughs> like, it's it's so- not happening. <laughs> I can see that as a TV, like a TV scene. Like, yeah, it's, it's going to be great one day. Just wait. But anyways, we learn about what the like, what the, the, the what these tattoos really mean. Mm-hmm. Um, and so she basically goes and she's like, you want to tell me something, boy? And he's like. He's like he looks like a like a twenty something year old man who gets caught. <laughs> He's like, yeah. What do you mean? He's like, oh. what, do you, what do you mean? And then she, I love when he starts talking in her head, and she's like, no, you're gonna say it out loud to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I have saved on my uh, phone. I screenshotted it. Wait, let me pull it up. And I was I was about to send it to you because this is something that kind of gave me an ick um, in the books. And I like some of the, like, when the, whatever, when the nurse is like, let me be clear, I'm never fucking you. And that's, like, modern slang. I thought that was cute. But what gave me an ick is when it says, and side note, Fisher and I were now randomly capable of speaking into each other's minds. (laughs) That's a a real (laughs) sentence that I have screenshotted. That's that's a very um, juvenile way to put it. But you know what? Okay. We all know when I see you have it here, which I love. That is one of my favorite tropes is when people can yes. talk. Because, like, I love, um, especially when we'll get to, hopefully, eventually, is the labyrinth. When they can, like, <laughs> feel each other near. Yeah. And when they're talking, but you can see, mm-hmm. like, they're talking. No one else can hear them. I'm like, whoo. Yeah. And I love when they're having, like, <laughs> sex, though. First time she knows she, he can do it. And, um... She's like, wait, you heard that? He goes, only when you talk to me do I hear Yeah, that. yeah. Um, and she's, she's like, like trying to like <laughs> reason with the Quicksilver in his head. And he like responds. He's like, it's so cute. Because she's like, can you yeah. play? Hey, guys, can, can we like not? I really like this guy. And he's like, Are you tr-? he's like, you can try, but they won't listen. And she's like, wait, you heard that? He goes, yeah, like we're the same person. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's like, like I, I know that you're you're talking to the, to the, the metal in my eyes. Um, so long story short, through all this sexual activity, we find out that they are not just like mates, they're like godly God mates, tier. like God God-tier yes. mates, like what they write yes. stories about. Not just mates. They're more than that. And there hasn't been mm-hmm. this since the stories were written all those yeah. years ago. This is kind of where I get a little like ugh about this book. I love it. I love the world building. I love that they're mates. Obviously they're gonna be mates. It's a fucking romantic. But the fact that they go through the entire mating ritual in this first book is a little annoying because I'm like, what, what, we don't know how many books are going to be in the series, but say there's only two, say there's only a duology. What's going on in book two? Because he are, he accepted the mating bond. I'm pretty sure she basically is going to accept the mating bond. I know they set up like a new arc for her in book two, but why are we completely closing the romanticy? In book one, this is why I thought it was a standalone because I'm reading the mate reveal. I'm reading the mate acceptance. Like we got everything in this first book. I think it's going to take the turn of we're going to get maybe she's going to go back where time's running out for her to accept this mating bond. Yeah. Because her life's about to turn upside down. If you mm-hmm. finish the book, you know very well why. And we also know she can't have kids. It's been brought up like five times now. So bitch is going to get pregnant. Mm. And so I think that she is going to let the mating bond go and go and go and go until she finds out she's pregnant. And then it's like, a lot like snap something's gonna happen it's gonna be like an iron flame situation if anyone read that like we thought we ended that book on a good note and then we enter the (laughs) next book and we're like oh okay so we took a step back you're mad at him for some reason because she's like a new person and she's gonna go through her growth spurts 
Yeah. But so that I sucks think that's where the romance is taking us. How are we going to have 50% romance if I know. they're not? I don't. If it's they're gonna, fighting. It's going to be your classic, we're going to turn this on its head. Crazy. Well, she also was Crazy. talking um, at the end when she gets transported to that god realm. Mm-hmm. She visits the god of chaos. Yes. Um, and removes her and Fisher from their sight. Yeah, she like basically is like I'm cutting my strings. If you're thinking like very traditionally of Greek mythology, yeah. And now they're fateless. Yeah, basically, and the gods can't intervene. Yeah, so, so mm, we'll see. I, I it did it ended in such a big epic way, and I think there's a lot of good setup for the next book. I just was like, why are they already mates and accepting you know the bond? Where is this relationship going to go? This is going to be a, a three book series because there's three Aww. siblings. We find out that Bellican, uh, what the fuck is her name? And uh, Madra. Madra oh. and Mer- and Malcolm are Malcolm. all siblings and working together. They're all siblings. When I saw that, that whore, I was like, you, <laughs> you bitch. I was like, ah. I was like, you, you nasty <laughs> motherfucker. You, you're you, here. You're here. <laughs> no, the like the epic conclusion after we get like she builds her little swords and we have like the minor she war conflict. The Quicksilver, All which is of, fun. I loved her little training arc, but there's not much to say for it. So let's jump into that final battle. The Kingfisher obviously tries to sacrifice himself and he's like, I'm going to go alone. And then they jump through the portal. But I kind of like that because that meant that we didn't have to linger on, like, setting the conflict up. <sighs> the planning. You know what I mean? The we got to the jump right into it. The only <laughs> yeah. thing I didn't like is when they're prepping for the battle, the other characters go off to, like, go find that witch person to help. And we don't see any of that. And then all of a sudden the witch person is, like, acting there. like a main character and talking to them. And I'm like, who the fuck is this bitch? I thought that was poorly done. Yeah. But. The final battle, the shock of seeing them all together. They're the siblings. It gave very, like, the originals vibe. Yeah. Because we have our human. I'm guessing she's still human. Faye and vampire. Yes. Together. And there are our big baddies. Yes. And so we then, through this, learn of Kingfisher. Like, the whole book, like, we never really understood what happened. When yeah, he why he was gone for so long. And it turns out he had this hold on him, which they released. We find out he's been stuck in this labyrinth. What I think is really cool is this labyrinth situation does feel very Greek. So when they're down into there and we get the backstory about when he has to tell them what happened and basically how he was tricked um, with this coin and like the different levels of the labyrinth. Like, wow, like Mm -hmm. what a cool concept to come up, like taking something that we know the labyrinth from greek mythology like we know that story but then like kind of turning it on its head here in this realm with we have the vampires it was so we have some wolves and it's like (laughs) witches like and humans yeah crazy and it was so cinematic too this idea of like when we see like the flashback moment and they like faded this city on like a coin flip and then they like snatched the coin out of the air and so then the final battle was kind of focused around this idea of like finding the coin and letting it hit the ground and the fact that the final battle what did have that like actionable like folky almost um tone to it and instead and it wasn't like now I slashed with my sword and then he slashed with his sword but it was like no we have to get this coin we have to let it hit the ground that was perfect pacing Yes, yeah. And then also to the fact of, like, just when you think they're about to go through Shadowgate, that's when she gets whisked away because she made yeah. a deal with the Quicksilver um, to have an audience with her. And that's when we mm-hmm. learn more of this backstory of... Um, yes. Um, which we're going to get to. My favorite part is anytime they're in that apartment that was his mom's in that mm-hmm. town. And I love the writing when he's... She's like, well, you came here because you were looking for something. And she, he goes, no, I came here. I needed something because all these people have hope. Um, and I thought that was so sweet because he, yeah. that's all he was looking for is that, you know, these mm-hmm. people in this town that his mother loved and this is where they had their apartment and where he kind of grew up with her. Um, 
you know, I love those sex scenes. They're, I think they're <laughs> like perfect. Um, yeah. And so romantic and amazing. Um, it, yeah. It reminds me of when in Twilight in the last one, when they, mm-hmm. Bella Pretty and Edward get their own house. Yeah. Literally that imagery of like uh-huh. what the inside of that house looks like. That's what I imagine this like apartment <laughs> looks like. Just this like collector's antique like they had the imagery of the candles like wax all over the place. I don't know. It's just so great. Um, But we find out his mom was an oracle. Wait. Yeah. Like oracle. a seer or something seer. like that. Yeah. Oracle is a is the Greek mythology word for that. So I think that's what they know. Use. I think Oracle does more like prophecy, but yes. So and she, she wrote this book for him, basically yes. saying, like, you're gonna find this girl. She's gonna come bursting into your life. And mm-hmm. then so you guys read the book, you guys know all about that. And I love when she wakes up yeah. and Carrion's reading it. <laughs> yeah, like, and she was like, she- Is a book with a bunch of images of me? And he's like, With pointed Shit. ears. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Once again, that was so fun. Love him. But when she's talking to the god of chaos, we get yeah. the well, I've tried to keep on like moving you guys around, but so she actually was supposed to be born Faye, but she wasn't. <gasps> no, that was so perfect. And that's another like this like fairy tale, like larger than life story where it's like they were fated to be that, but like the twist of fate turned. It was very like grander and I loved it. I thought the ending was so fucking good. Yes, because she wakes up. Mm-hmm. And she doesn't know where she is. And everyone's Because like, we ended on the scene of, like, the coin hit. And she's, like, dying from Malcolm killing her. That's yes. when Carrion's like, is she going to fucking live? Yeah. It's, like, so cinematic. I can see it so clearly in my mind. And that's when, like, the vampire guy that you thought was bad but actually, like, do you mean to turn her? Do you mean to turn talking her? To you, like, they're He's like, Does she should I do it? Should I do it? Should I do it? And Kingfisher made the decision for her to turn her into a vampire so she would live. I love the does she consent? Does she consent? And then in the, yeah. the chapter ends, she consents. Um, so yeah. she wakes up after talking to God, dude. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, she's like, Where am I? And they're like, We can't tell you. And they're like, Where am I? Fisher wants to tell you. And then yeah. finally, we find out they're on the other side of the river because she is supposed, she's going to be crowned the new queen. The queen. The vampires. She so yeah. They said at the end of the book they don't know if she's half fae, half vampire. Uh-huh. So we don't really know what she is. Um, but I love that we find out. Um, because the dude, the vampire dude, I forget his name, put a block on her memory so she wouldn't. She's like, no, take it off, and he does. And we found she like bit him, and like she went through like craziness. So yeah, very like hard Twilight transformation yes. vibes. It, a whirlwind and I think the next book is going to be very cool I'm worried about the romance part but for yes. the fantasy we have set up for something epic and hopefully something that can be concluded in a second book only <laughs> right wouldn't that be great I would love a duology but I do have a feeling it's going to be three books um yeah so I do I I'm excited. I, I, I think there's gonna be three books. I want two, but I think there's gonna be three. I think this next yeah. one is gonna take us on her as this like queen, but there's two other gu- bad guys left. Yeah. Um Yeah, we so- still have to kill Madra. Because okay, so here's the thing as likely as book two is her conquering the vampire lands and then using her vampire soldiers and her face soldiers to kill Belican. Yeah. And then book three, it's her going back and saving her people and conquering Madra. Yes. I think that's kind of the one villain per book situation. Mm -hmm. Kind of how Twilight was. Um, Yeah. And it wraps it in the order we meet them because we meet Madra first. So we'll finish her thing last. We meet Malcolm second. So we'll kill him second. Meet Malcolm first. Kill him first. And also like who they're closer to. Right now they're closer to Malcolm. And then he'll be next and then they mm-hmm. have to basically world hop to go to but she needs to work on her quicksilver powers more yeah um and there can be a lot just there's a lot to go off of now um but this book was really good i have a feeling it's gonna mm-hmm. be my favorite out of the three <laughs> but <laughs> but we'll see we'll see yeah. um I'm, this book got like popular really fast so i'm 
I'm curious yeah. to see how many of you are interested in reading more of the series. What do you think of it? Mm-hmm. It's not your traditional published romantic book. So I'm really curious. Um, so yes. please like and subscribe. Thanks for sticking with us. Um, please yes. write down anything we missed. Um, we'll talk more about it below. Um, and then also let us know if you want us to read the next one coming out in October. It's going to October so soon. so soon. We're getting fed so quickly. <laughs> so, yes. All right, y'all. Thank you so much for joining us and happy reading. Bye.